2023 marks the second year in which Antarctic sea ice has reached a minimum extent as measured by satellite instruments. Since in the southern hemisphere the seasons are reversed from those in the northern hemisphere, the peak of summer in the Antarctic occurs during February. In Antarctica, sea ice normally reaches its maximum extent in September when the sea ice covers around 7 million square miles. And by the end of February, historically only around 1 million square miles or 2.5 million square kilometers remains. In 2022, the minimum sea ice extent was less than 772,000 square miles or 2 million square kilometers. The lowest total in the satellite record, which began in 1979. On February 21st, 2023, that number had shrunk even lower to just 691,000 square miles or 1.8 million square kilometers, which is down about 40% from the average minimum extent between 1981 and 2010. In this video, we will take a look at what might be the consequences of the decline in Antarctic sea ice. The reason that a decline in Antarctic sea ice would be a problem, if there really is such a decline, is that it would strengthen the Ross Gyre. The Ross Gyre is a 1,000 kilometer wide circulation pattern in the Antarctic Ocean that is fed by warmer water from further north. If the Ross Gyre increases in size, it could bring warmer water closer to the glaciers of West Antarctica and hasten their melting, which in turn would significantly increase sea level rise. To understand how this works, we first need to understand how ocean gyres are formed and how they help to create the system of ocean currents called the ocean conveyor belt that causes continual mixing of all the ocean waters and that helps to regulate ocean temperatures, salinity, and nutrient flow. As I said, an ocean gyre is a large system of circular ocean currents formed by global wind patterns and forces created by the Earth's rotation. The three factors that cause the creation and circulation of uh, the ocean gyre include global wind patterns, the Earth's rotation, and the Earth's land masses. Wind drags on the ocean surface, causing water to move in the direction that wind is blowing. The Earth's rotation deflects or changes the direction of these wind-driven currents. This deflection is caused by the Coriolis effect which shifts the surface currents by angles of about 45 degrees. In the northern hemisphere, ocean currents are deflected to the right in a clockwise motion. In the, in the southern hemisphere, ocean currents are pushed to the left in a counterclockwise motion. Finally, land masses limit the size of the various ocean gyres. As I said before, currents formed by the major ocean gyres combine to form the so-called ocean conveyor belt, which causes water from all the oceans to mix. It is this mixing that helps the oceans to absorb heat and carbon dioxide from the air. In the Southern Ocean, the 1,000 kilometer wide Roche gyre normally runs deep and carries cold water. However, with the sea ice in the southern ocean of Antarctica declining, climate models predict changes in the Ross Gyre. Specifically, wind forces are expected to cause the Ross Gyre to expand in size, and this would bring more warm water into the southern ocean. At least one climate model predicts that this process could warm the southern ocean by about one degree centigrade over the next 30 years. The major reason then that loss of Antarctic sea ice is of concern is that the resulting one degree centigrade increase in the ocean temperature would lead to a much more rapid melting of the West Antarctic ice shelf. Since the ice 
in this ice shelf was formed from fresh water, its melting would contribute to sea level rise. In fact, it has been estimated that if the entire West Arctic, West Antarctic ice shelf were to melt, sea level would rise by about 3.3 meters. That would be a matter of serious concern for, for coastal regions. In addition, the rising temperature in the southern hemisphere would affect the global oceanic conveyor belt in a way that would reduce the ability of the oceans to absorb heat and carbon dioxide. While these predictions indeed are concerning, it's important to point out that we don't yet have sufficient data to be certain about the long-term trend in Antarctic sea ice. And until recently, the Antarctic has been much more resistant to warming has been, than has been the Arctic. Only time will tell if the situation is as dire as these predictions suggest. I hope that you have found this short video informative. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section, and I will do my best to answer them. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel.